I'm the USA Today best-selling author of Cozy Mysteries. Welcome to my camper, my shamper, my she camper, where I do all my writing and bring all of my characters to life. We are going to read chapter one in Murder by the Bay. Years of dust fluttered through the stale air of the old abandoned Victorian bed and breakfast and filled Julia France's lungs after she jerked the red velvet drapes open to let the morning sunlight come through the floor of the ceiling windows. That's the picturesque scene you had in your head, Priscilla Daly grunted from behind Julia, setting Julia's nerves on edge. This wasn't Priscilla's first go around with opening a bed and breakfast, and about right now there was regret in her gut that she'd let Julia... Julia France, of all people in the world, talked her into quitting her sous chef job at the Chef LeBlanc to come work for her. Seriously? Priscilla couldn't help but look at the dingy walls, worn carpet, sheet-covered furniture. She pushed back her frizzy dish blonde water hair. Sweat beaded along her brow line. She brushed the sleeve of her shirt across her forehead and looked out over the bay. Uneasy and unsure of what she'd done, she rubbed her hands down her thick hips, wondering if she was going to make enough money to keep them curvy. It was the first day Julia had gotten the keys to her dream, a dream that had been two years of the making, no thanks to the short sale that tied up the property. Thank God she was a patient woman. Maybe not the exact picture in my head, Julia tilted her head from side to side, trying to see the view from all angles. Only the inch-thick dust that had collected on the inside of the home and at least three inches of salt water film on the outside of the window obscured her view. But maybe with a little window cleaner? A loud gasp escaped Julia's lips. Thoughts flooded her mind in fear. If she didn't work fast, she wasn't going to be ready to open the door of the Victorian antique tray she'd bought at the estate sale. Another image she had ingrained in her head. The polka dot pantry dress with the crinoline lining under the skirt would be a perfect against her pale white skin and cold black hair. She had even found a pair of size 6 patent leather high heels with a small bow on the toe of the shoe. It would be perfect. Julia pictured herself standing in the doorway of the bed and breakfast in that exact same dress in the perfect shoes with her hair parted to the side and the edges slipped up. It played out like a movie. She'd smile, welcome to Blossom Bay's, welcome to Blossom Bay Inn, a name that came in her dream. First overnight guest's Again, she picked, pictured the best honeymooners. Her new-to-her tray would be filled with bite-sized cakes and torts Priscilla would have whipped up and flukes of champagne. It was perfect. Julia France's dream come true. She'd only wish she had been able to open last month like she was supposed to, or she wouldn't have taken the reservations. There was no sense in crying over spilt milk, she thought, and decided to look at the situation with a glass-half-full attitude. She pulled the sheets off of the piece of furniture closest to the window, uncovering a gorgeous and expensive-looking chaise lounge where she was sure someone had rested to enjoy the view of Blossom Bay, the inn's best attraction. She smacked the palm of her hand on the fabric and disappeared, disappeared into a plume of dust. Waving her hand in the air, she tried to break out the dust of bunnies. You thought it would take us a few hours? Priscilla's hands were filled with stacks of pots she had found at the local yard sale that would help her get started on her future. Nothing a little dusting can't fix, Julia called over her shoulder as Priscilla left the room. She wasn't about to let Priscilla ruin her dream, especially on the first day. She walked around the room plucking all the sheets off the furniture. Each piece revealed better and better. We only have one couple coming today. Julia was good under pressure, and she was feeling it now. She bit the edge of her bottom lip. We can quickly clean the main rooms, their bedroom, and leave the rest for later. It was a perfect plan. Julia was pleased with herself. She walked back over and carefully sat down on the seven-foot-wide mahogany chase lounge, admiring the gold leaf feet and details etched in the wood. The gold, brown, and cream strip material had an accent with thin scarlet stripes, making the velvet curtains on the window behind it perfect accessory. Julia knew she had a lot of work ahead of her. She knew when the place went on the bidding block that no one wanted it. But she also had a very vivid dream as a child of the exact same house. It was tattooed in her mind. 
You still believe in fate? Priscilla grunted from the hallway. More than ever, Julia happily sighed. She ran her hand down the chase and let the excitement of the day begin to grow inside of her. Julia France believed in fate and all things karma. A couple of years ago, she was driving through Balsam Bay for the first time to join friends for a weekend getaway. She had stopped at the wharf right in the cove to get a look at the ocean. It was the most beautiful ocean landscape she'd ever seen on the East Coast. When she turned to get back in her car, it was as if her dream had come to life. The Blossom Bay Inn sat on the top of the hill overlooking the bay. It winked at her in a twinkling sunshine. It was the very house she dreamed about so many years ago. A dream she'd held on to all her life. A dream that was about to come true. Chapter 1, Murder by the Bay. <music> <laughs>